Hello everybody, I'm Corinne Tomlinson from Greenwood Bonsack Studio here in Nottingham. Our short video for you today, uh, we're going to give you some information and details about Japanese Satsuki Azalea. Botanically, these are Rhododendron Indicum and it's a species of Azaleas that originate in Japan and there are hundreds of different cultivars of Satsuki Azalea. We've got some young plants in here in the studio today um, that we've been recently working on and selling on our website and I've brought some examples in in flower and want to show you some of the variety of flowers and we're also going to discuss and do some work on this larger Satsuki azalea of mine. I've had this for over 15 years. So these azaleas, rhododendron indicum, these are young plants imported from Japan. Uh, they've been grown to get nice movement to the trunk they're quite slender and elegant at the moment, just in the early stages of bonsai cultivation. And they normally flower in the UK, they tend to flower about the end of May, beginning of June. These particular ones have been in a greenhouse, so they're flowering a little bit earlier this year. And just like you get roses with different cultivar names and different flower characteristics, the same is true with the Satsuki azalea. This particular one is a cultivar called Casa no Yuki. And the flowers of this, quite a large flowered cultivar, beautiful pale pink with a deeper throat and a white edge to the flower. And on these Satsuki, they'll flower, you'll get a good three weeks out of them when they flower and they're quite reliable and they'll flower every year if well cared for. So that's Casa no Yuki. This next one, is a multicolour satsuki. It isn't uncommon with satsuki azaleas. And here we've got a white base colour with a slight pink fleck, but then we've also on the same tree got pink flowers. And this cultivar is Ryoka no Izumi. And you'll see it in subtitles on your, uh, on your screen. And then we've got this uh, Onno Zuki, a beautiful pale pink, like a powder pink, very, very delicate colour to the flower. And then slightly darker, we've got Asahi no Izumi. And they have slightly different leaf characteristics as well. Some of the darker flowered ones have a darker leaf, some have a larger or smaller leaf. And this one again, we've got some dark pink, light red, and some white. So it's a multicolored cultivar of Satsuki. This is a Murasaki, quite a popular cultivar, a pale and slightly deeper colored flower, quite an elegant and narrower flower with a longer petal. Again, slightly different characteristic. If we put it down here next to that first one, you can see the difference in flower characteristics and also in size. This next one's unusual. This is a fairly new cultivar called Oryu, and it's uh, for a long time people in Japan have been trying to get a uh, sort of lemon colour or yellow coloured satsuki. This is an example of that. It's a sort of a yellowy green petal, and it's got a different petal characteristic. To the others also it sort of ruffles in and very nice compact closed in formation and very very heavily flowering this one quite an unusual cultivar and we're quite lucky that we've still got just a few of these left here on the nursery at the moment so pop that back down there so these are young trees imported from japan that we've been offering for sale and working on and then also i've got this tree here uh, on my left and this is an um, imported satsuki. I bought it about 15 years ago. When I first got it, it was in a quite a large polystyrene box and the branches were out here, very, very leggy growth on it. So initially, after about a year and a half, it looked like this image now that we're showing you. You can see it hasn't got much density. The branches aren't very well developed. And I've just put a little bit of wine on some of the branches to start shaping them. This next photograph, a year later, it's got a few more flowers on it 
and better density of foliage. It's starting to develop a little bit. The following year, again, it's got more flowers, it's filled out more and it's starting to mature. Then the year after that, I didn't let it flower. In the UK, personally for me, with my azaleas, I give them a year off every three years. So I let them flower on the first year, flower on the second year, and I don't take, let them flower on the third year. So as the buds are swelling, coming into flower, I remove all the flowers from the tree. So this photograph here, it was, is showing it with no flowers on when it had a year off. The following year, it put on this display, it was in a new pot, and it was a beautiful, bright pink display, really good density of flowers. And this is probably, at this stage, it's the best it had ever looked since, since I owned it. Then, the following year, I gave it another year off and didn't let it flower. People think that that's a bit of a shame because they say, oh, well, I bought this tree, it's a beautiful tree, it looks really nice when it flowers. They want it to flower every year. But by letting it not flower for a year, giving it a year off, this was the display it rewarded me with the following year. So again, from this display here, if I go back to this one here, the density of flower is much, much greater. And finally, about three years ago, I commissioned a pot especially for this tree. This one that it's in now is a handmade pot by Warsaw Studio Ceramics. And here you can see a photograph of it two years ago in full flower in this pot. This tree over the last year or so has been in a greenhouse and we've just been letting it grow a little bit wild uh, to get some vigour and growth into the tree and now it's time to give it a little bit of a prune and a spring tidy up. So if we have a look here, the front's towards you, all this growth at the base, it just sprouted out these suckers from the roots. So what I'm gonna do, we'll trim these off. This growth here, it's quite dense. The Satsuki azaleas are, are, are basal dominant. A lot of trees are apically dominant. They put a lot of growth on up at the top. With a Satsuki, the reverse is true. So you get more vigor in these lower sections. So it's important to trim these lower sections back to balance the vigor of the tree. This one also has got a little branch up in here. There's a little branch here that's died off, unfortunately. So that needs removing. So we need to remove that, trim this back, thin it out a little bit. And if we turn it round here, you see these long shoots here, they need to be taken back. So at this time of year in the UK, these are loaded with flower buds just waiting to come out in a few weeks time. But this tree here is scheduled for repotting process this year. So what we're gonna do, you've got two options with Satsuki in the UK. You can either repot them in early spring or you can repot after flowering. I prefer to do them after flowering. If you do them in the UK in early spring, you can repot them. We can have dull, wet, cloudy weather, and they don't always respond very well to being done in early spring. I much prefer to do the work to them just after flowering, sort of beginning of June time, and then I put them in a warm greenhouse and they really bounce back from that work very well and grow very strongly. So this has got to be trimmed. We will inevitably today, as we trim it, we will be cutting flower buds off. It's not an issue because it's not gonna be flowering this year anyway, but that will set it up well for next year. The most important thing with growing satskis I found in the UK, you know, they're, they're not a difficult tree to grow, but there are certain things you need to know about them. Firstly, most satsuki imported into the UK are coming from Japan and they'll be planted into kanuma. So this is a bag of kanuma. It's Japanese soil, mined in Japan, and it's a very, very pale, sort of sulfur yellow substrate. And it's acidic. Azaleas are an ericaceous tree, and they like a very acidic soil. So this granular structure and acidity, they grow very well in it. And you can just use it neat out the bag. You don't need to mix it with anything else. You can see here, these young ones from Japan are growing in pure kanuma. And we should be able to, well, these are wired in, but if we just get rid of this wire and just slip one out of the pot, can you see, azaleas have a very fine 
fibrous root system. And that isn't in need of repotting, that's fine in there for another year in the Kanuma soil. So it's important in the UK, that if they're in Kanuma, you continue to grow them into Kanuma. It's important to keep them well watered, they use a lot of moisture. A broadleaf evergreen like this, even during the winter, it's transpiring through the leaves and it has a requirement for water more so than a tree that possibly goes dormant, for instance, like a like an like an acer, like a Japanese maple. So you do have to keep up on the watering of these. Watering is important, the soil is important, also the feeding is quite important. Now I favour a granular feed. There's two main granular feeds that we use here at Greenwood. The first one is Fosmag. And this was actually specifically developed for rhododendrons. And it's just a granular feed. You just sprinkle a pinch or some of it on the soil surface. And it lasts about four weeks. And when it's all gone, you add some more. It's a chemical based feed. It works very well with all bonsai, but particularly good for azalea and rhododendron. And the other feed we often use is Naruko. Naruko is a Japanese feed, semi-organic, the only difference really is it, with it being organic, it does go a little bit mouldy as it starts to break down. Very, very good for azaleas, good for getting dark green, glossy colour on them. During the winter, the Satsuki in the UK, this particular tree, through winter, it just goes into a well-ventilated, unheated greenhouse. On a mild winter, and if you're down on the south coast of the UK, they'll be, out, they'll be fine outside all winter. We're in the Midlands and if you're a bit further north than us, it is worth, before you purchase a Satsuki, just to, trying to uh, figure out where you're going to keep it in winter. Potentially have a little greenhouse or potting shed or small polytunnel available to allow you to shelter it for the worst weather. So we're just going to clear this space down and we'll get ready to do a little bit of work on this Satsuki. So this Satsuki, we're going to trim off some of these pieces down here. These suckers, it is a tendency of satsis to throw suckers out from the base. So with a concave pruner, let's get in there and see where they're coming from. Just snip those off. And these smaller ones, we can use a more delicate concave pruner to get in there and remove them from the base. Right. So, another one in here, like this. foliage pads of these this one's a little bit messy when you look inside there's some old little twigs and leaves and things in there so that just wants a bit of a tidy up this longer growth here look we can shorten it back like this to get a better shape to the foliage pad reduce it back or if we need to we could go in with a bigger pair of scissors and we could take this back a little bit more to get more compact growth and at this time of year doing this even in the UK if we trim this back and we leave branches like this look with no leaf on it will then bud and leaf from these branches which is uncommon you can't do it on a lot of trees but you can do it on these areas so I'm going to have a little bit of a tidy up and work my way around this tree the reason I've got this tree, I've been into Satsuki's for about 30 years or so, and we said earlier there's about there's hundreds of different cultivars of Satsuki azalea, and the reason I'm particularly drawn to this one is this one's name is Corin, the same as me. But I'm spelt with a C, and this is spelt with a K. So this is what this tree, its posh name is uh, is Rhododendron indicum Corin. So I always wanted to find a, a good example of a Corin Satsuki and uh, this is my own Corin Satsuki from my private bonsai collection. So I'm working way through, just taking back some of this longer growth. In here, look, these long shoots can be taken aback just to get a more, a better shape to these foliage pads. And where this foliage pad is growing into this one, there's a little bit of growth we can take out between the two just to tidy that up also. A little bit of growth growing down. Just a tidying up process ready for this coming year. 
So I've spent 10, 15 minutes or so giving this a prune. I've gone back a little bit tighter than I was going to start off trimming it. So we've gone back into some older wood because we've got a bit of legginess on some of these foliage pads. So now we've taken it back like this. We've got a bit more definition and gap between these foliage pads and made it a little bit denser here at the top. But also to lighten it up like that, we'll get more light and air into those branches and we'll get new buds emerging. We've cut quite a lot off, look. There's a, there's a bench and a floor full of growth that we've taken off this tree. So we've probably cut, uh, I think we've probably cut 25, about 25%, about a quarter of this foliage off the tree. So next thing with this is just tidy up this soil surface around the nabari and the surface roots of this tree. And then now it's like uh, end of April, so we're going to probably repot this tree um, about the end of May, beginning of June. So maybe another four to five weeks or so, we're going to get this one repotted uh, for this year. And then we might, uh, we might do a video of doing that and show you how to go on. I hope you found this video on Satsuki Azalea useful and give, hopefully it's given you a few pointers. If you'd like to get one of these small young Satsuki to grow, there's a quantity of these available on the website at the moment. And please give us a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and keep your eye out for new videos coming up over the next few weeks. Thank you very much.